Hello, Facebook, and welcome to Righteous Resolve. I'm Leisha. This is my mom, Bonnie. Hi. And this evening, we have our lovely special guest, my youngest sister, Leo. Welcome, Leo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's the imaginary audience. <laughs> so we invited Leo on the show today. Hi, Leo. Hi, mom. <laughs> we invited Leo on the show today just to bring a new dynamic, but today we are talking about eight keys to being intentional during singleness. Now, this is really important. We've been talking about self-worth based out of Proverbs 10 or 31, verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman? Her price is far above rubies. And then we started talking about all the components and areas in life that go into being intentional, and relationships are a big deal in that. So... Leo's going to be a part of the show. We welcome you. Welcome, Leo. What I love about it is Leo was very anxious and eager mm -hmm. and really took a lot of time this week to prepare uh, just her thoughts on the conversation. And the other part I love about it is oftentimes when we're at home, Leo kind of nowhere to be found. <laughs> nowhere to be found. He doesn't want to be in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Where have you been, Leo? Oh, welcome. She's a wallflower. She's been taking it all in. Yeah. We're so excited. So... We're talking about being intentional. We started on this topic last Saturday in being intentional in our relationships. We had our special edition feature, Breaking News with the Wall Street Journal, about people not being intentional, offering up for cheap sex and declining um, on the decline in marriage. So too often we see that people are striving for something that we're not intentional toward, we're not prepared for. And this has really been pressed in my heart as I look for and desire to be married, okay, if my spouse walked into my life right now, Orita, what would I be scrambling to change? Would I have to catch myself with an attitude? Would I um, not be fully bought in with my purpose? Would I be scrambling to just fix up all these things that, oh my goodness, I wish I would have been prepared? And that's never a good thing. Um, another thing, too, that seems to be a really big deal with the advent of social media being so accessible via our cell phones that we've developed unrealistic expectations. You know, you used to hear about it being the Disney princess ideal, right. and more and more it's the, what is the Instagram picture? What does the Instagram story look like? Are these mm. relationship goals? And that's not based in reality. I think mom can speak yeah. to that better than anyone. Right. You know, that, like you, we talked about last week, where, you know, you've got some picture with some hottie while you're playing video games or some, you know, boo by your side who's, you know, buying the latest Prada mm -hmm. bag. You know, that is not reality. And not to say that you shouldn't have someone good looking, not to say that, some, you know, you don't want a man that can provide for you. Mm -hmm. But again, if it's all about your status, online is that real and the truth of the matter is in a marriage you're coming home into your four walls it's not about what the world sees but it's about that dynamic that you have between that person you say you love and with god absolutely and we have to be so careful especially as christians that we're not allowing the image the world projects build up expectations in our mind so we're establishing that in our minds as principle it's not the principle and more importantly um, we need to focus on what matters right now. Right. And right now what matters is our purpose. What matters is our relationship with God and how we go about being obedient in that relationship before right. we bring anyone else in the mix. Mm -hmm. So herein lies our eight keys to being intentional during singleness. And a disclaimer, if you are not married, you are single. So listen up. <laughs> our first key is... Being single is not a rejected status. It is a That's sacred time to right. be with God. Um, there's nothing wrong with being single. So often people, I've had people say to me like, well, why are you single? What's wrong with you? Like, I mean, you seem pretty and smart and seem to be, you know, intentional about living your life. So then what's wrong with you? Are you weird? No, no. <sighs> No. Part of it is, Laisha, is you're not willing to compromise. Right? Absolutely not. And that's the, one of the biggest differentiators oftentimes. I'm not saying just because you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, it means you're in a compromise. Right. But a lot of times when you're saying, no, I'm going to live for God, I'm going to hold his commandments true to my heart, mm -hmm. that will separate you very quickly. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's something also 
wrong with or we need to recognate i'm loving that word recognate we need to readjust our perspective <clears throat> excuse me when we're looking and calling something that god calls sacred and blessed a failed status a rejected status um this is a time to be a little bit selfish because all that really concerns you is yourself. Mm -hmm. You are accountable to yourself. And I mean, yes, the people, other people you're in relationship with, but you're accountable to yourself and you need to find yourself in God. Absolutely. You're not balancing, okay, this is my purpose, but this is, I have this other person to deal with. You're weighing it you to God. God, is this what you want me to do? And then you can move on it quickly. And right? let me just say this. You know, you said if a person were to come into your life right now, how would they find you? Mm -hmm. I think, you know what, that person shouldn't have, be able to disrupt your purpose in God Absolutely so quickly. Not. You know, um, if, if they can pull you off track, if they can uh, take your attention from God, you need to check your relationship with God mm -hmm. because really that man or woman should come alongside right. of you Absolutely. and find you serving in the house of God, mm -hmm. serving in your purpose, not pulling you away from. Because honestly, as Christians, we're going to need our walk with God, godly principle mm -hmm. uh, in the long run, not only to define and determine whether that person is for us, but also to, to bring stability and, and to be a place of reconciliation when, when times of troubles come, uh, come along. So watch those relationships that pull you from the things of God. Mm -hmm. um, if they have so many questions and they can't understand mm -hmm. why you're sacrificing uh, to do things for the kingdom of God, for your church, yeah. for your purpose, what are we, we don't saying? need to be with them. You're, if they're questioning you and you end up questioning yourself, you don't need to be with them. That's, that's they're not good. for mm -hmm. you because God will put somebody in her life, that, like my mom said, that will undergird you and make your purpose go higher. Absolutely. That's good. good. So I have a scripture about this. Um, I've been standing on it personally. Isaiah 54, verses 1 through 5, it says, Sing, O barren, that thou did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, that thou did not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. So what that's basically saying is, this is a woman who... Um, is a widow. This is a woman who has not had children yet. And so in this time, it was she was looked at with shame, like, oh, what's wrong with you? You don't have any kids. You're not married. You've been rejected by everyone else. But what God is telling her to say, no sing, because there's a, a level of burden that comes with more responsibility. Mm -hmm. You're free right now. So sing and rejoice in this time because you have your, your ability, your purpose can go a little farther because there's less concerning you. It sa then says, enlarge the place of your tent and let it stretch forth the curtains of your inhabitations. Don't spare any length of the cords or length of the stakes. You will break forth on the right hand and on the left and your she seed shall inherit the Gentiles and you will make desolate cities inhabited. Fear not for you will not be ashamed. Neither will you be confounded, for you shall not be put to shame, for you shall forget your shame, and you will not remember the shame of your, your reproach or your widowhood anymore. For your maker is your husband. He is the Lord of hosts, that is his name. He is the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So what that says to me is everyone else, whether it's culture, society, people in your family, may be criticizing the place that you are in right now. But God says that, no, I'm, I'm, your, I'm the one you're in a relationship right, wow. with right now. You need to be in covenant with me. First of all, you'll never get out of that covenant with God. No, Don't no. ever get out of that covenant with God. Marriage with God, you will forever commune with them. It's just that you... When your spouse comes, it will be you and your spouse and God together right. because the two of you will become one. Right. And then God, God is the other component in the relationship. Right. But in that time, you need to break forth. You need to explore what resources you've been given by way of your talents, by your purpose, mm -hmm. opportunities that come your way. And stretch forth. Don't spare any time. Don't spare any expense. When you pray about those things and you really consecrate your time with God, then he was able to expand you. So then guess what? When your answer prayer comes, whether it be your spouse and that family that will come along later, you'll already be established in your purpose and your resource. And I think that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So this is clearly showing that this person isn't sitting at home 
depressed because they don't have a date. Right. With FOMO, fear of missing out, which that's a whole other topic for another day. <laughs> don't have FOMO. God is not giving you a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the next scripture that I think of is found in Matthew 6, and it says, Seek ye first the kingdom mm, of God, good. then everything else you desire will be added unto you. Mm. I think that speaks so clearly to being intentional. Right. Don't worry about what's coming tomorrow. Be concerned about what you have and seek God about those things. Right. So when you be, learn to become grateful for the place that you're in, when you become um, focused on the kingdom, like, God, what's your will? Right. Because That's a good I'm, question. if I'm in your will, I can't be out of line. And because I'm in your will and you're such a good father, you're going to bless me anyway. Yeah. But if I'm trying to do this all on my own strength, I have no idea. The path that I'm trying to go, I'll go off right. of half dark seeming situations, end up all wound up in things that don't really work. So a lot of that is, Laisha, what you're saying is trusting God. Absolutely. You're trusting you God to. in the purpose. And I mm -hmm. love what I recently heard uh, a preacher say, and that is, is that God knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. And so we're simply walking out. Now, it doesn't mean that every mistake we make, God predestined. That is not what I'm saying. No. But our ultimate <laughs> purpose and the good, God knows the thoughts that he thinks towards us. Mm -hmm. They're thoughts of good and not of Amen. evil Absolutely. to bring us to an expected end. And so when you start talking about FOMO, fear of missing out, if you're on God's perfect path, you're not missing out on you're anything. You're not missing right. out on perfect anything. Will before, and we'll get to this. Oh my gosh, we're going to get ahead of ourselves. And talking <laughs> about you have to fulfill your purpose, right. yeah. but um, it says before you were even born, formed God you. formed you in his mother's yes. womb and counted the days right. that were to be ordained to you. Yes. You literally only have to be obedient. Right. Wake up in the morning, do what you're supposed to do. Don't forget to brush your teeth. Yes. Uh, God doesn't want holotosis prayers coming up <laughs> to the wrong room. <laughs> he'll, he'll hear them. He'll, he'll hear them, but the, the angels will be fanning his nose like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the white angels falling up, not dead. <laughs> That's great. That's great. And so finally, in this time of really seeking God, it's also important that you know what his word says. Yes. You can't obey him if you don't know what his word says. Right. So that brings me to Proverbs 3. It says, my son, and that also applies to us ladies too. My son and my daughter, don't forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. For length of days, long life and peace shall they add to you. So your promise, long life and length of days and peace. Mm -hmm. But if you really consecrate that time to God, it'll be added to you. Yes. Let not mercy or truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them upon the table of your heart. I want to pause right there because we were having a conversation in a park in the parking lot with my older sister Danielle, Hi, which Danielle. we'll eventually have her as a guest star. But we were talking about how you know some people get so into their timetable, like God, I'm I'm expecting this thing by this mm -hmm. time. Which there's nothing wrong with really believing God and pressing right. yourself. Um, I've often found that sometimes even if um, those things are answered on my timetable. The press and the preparation that I took to have that expectation has brought me to a different place. Like yeah. that has jump started my faith and now I'm in a different level. And I'm like, okay, well now I have more faith and more strength to keep believing for this thing. Right. But that is not an excuse and not ever a reason for us to be like, well, God, you didn't give me what I desired when I wanted to. And then you use that as an excuse to say, well, I just couldn't hang on any longer. Right. So in singleness, that could look like um, falling into fornication just because I couldn't have the self-control right. um, to wait. No. So that what that shows is that it was more on your timetable than the table of your heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's so important that we have the word of God hidden in our heart mm -hmm. because the Bible says this, thy word have I hidden that my heart that I would mm -hmm. not sin against, against you. you. And so it's being married, first of all, to the word of God. Not so much from a head knowledge, but that it can actually direct your path. No what the because another scripture tells us that the word is a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. And so that's going to be guidance during the rough times. You know, even when you're lonely, and see, that's where a lot of people, 
like you said, they fall off of righteousness. They, right. they jump off of the righteous cliff. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say something? They <laughs> jump off of the righteous cliff because they feel that God's forgotten them. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes they're jumping off of the righteous cliff because they're looking at the world and they're seeing what people are doing from an ungodly perspective and then they're basing their life on that. Psalm right. 73 talks about my feet almost slip because I watched the wicked prosper in their way. You know, we can't afford to look at our ungodly uh, girlfriends um, and, and see, oh, well, they're hugged up with a boo every weekend and I'm lonely. That's not our measure. You know what yeah. right? We've got to use the word of God mm -hmm. that tells us that a single person's time belongs to the Lord. And so when we are committing our way to God, the Bible says if we commit our way to him, he, he, he will give us the desires of our heart. Well, and a lot of the desires of our heart, wrapping up that point, moving into key number two, and we call these keys, not points, because keys unlock things That's good. Mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. And each of these things, I'm learning in life that we will go through a series of levels or doors and sometimes we can advance to a level, be, but be stuck at the door because we didn't get the proper keys that we needed from the next level. So if you're having strong or having trouble with your relationship with God, it's going to be difficult for you to advance, um, namely understanding that you have purpose and that it must be fulfilled, that it's mandatory that it's fulfilled. And so we, I've heard people say before, well, I just feel like I don't have any purpose or how do I know what that is? First of all, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And when you start doing that, then you'll realize, like according to Psalm 139, verse uh, verse 1, Lord, you have searched me and you know me. Then moving on to uh, verse 13, it says, For you possess my reins and you have covered me from my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I marvel... I marvel at your works, and my soul knows well. My substance is not hidden from you when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes did see my substance and being unperfected, and within my book all my members were written, which in continuous were fashioned when they were as yet none of them. So before I even existed, you've meticulously woven me into time and space. So if God has taken this time, to really intricately design you as you. Yes. there is no other you, which also tells me that you were born on a specific day at yes. a specific time to a specific set of parents mm -hmm. in a specific city. And just, it goes on and on and on to the most micro levels that you have purpose. You have purpose. You have a realm of influence. And you were made perfectly. You know, that is so important because I just feel in my spirit that someone dealing with body shaming, and there's the shame of the way you were made. Maybe you feel that you are too heavy. Maybe you feel you're too short. Maybe, uh, maybe you're uh, recovering from having children and you're looking at your body and you're like, oh my God, it'll never be the same. Hello? Yeah, these two. Yeah, they wrecked my body. No. <laughs> they were blessings. It comes no. with the blessing. It comes with the blessing. <laughs> but we've got to let the word of God renew our mind. That's if I was struggling with that, I would get that picture in front of my eyes. And I would begin to repeat it. Father, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Listen, those images we see on Internet, uh, the social media, Instagram, some of the number one, I know Photoshop. I know how to make a per perfect body right. using airbrush. Some of that's not even real. It's unrealistic. Yes. Nobody's going to be that small. No, and if you are that small, God bless you too. Right. But I know I ain't never been no size zero. Mm -hmm. I a, like I was literally a size zero for a week. Like never, <laughs> never, never. Never. And I'm okay with that. But know this. It goes back to Psalm 139. We use the word. Oftentimes this word is re misrepresented. Mm -hmm. It's used as a, you can't do this. You can't do that. And you feel like you're being beat over the head with the word of God. Instead of it being a tool. Right. To help you a, a key or a recipe of renewing your mind. You know, it's almost like the Bible is a great beauty treatment. Wow. Mm -hmm. The Bible is an excellent beauty treatment because it has 
something to say. God has something to say about your self-worth. Just want to encourage you in that. Absolutely. Yes. And so within that, we've been given a purpose. We've been given a virtue. We've been given a value. We can clearly see this in Matthew 25, verse 14 through 30, where the it's a parable where Jesus is talking about a master. He gave each of his servants um, a sum of money. He said, to you I'm going to give this much. To you I'm going to give this much. And he went on down the line. And when he came back, he asked them, what did you do with what I gave you, my investment into you? And so the, all of them go down the line, oh, I did this with it. And he was so pleased with the ones who did something, yes, something with what he gave them. Then he gets to the last guy, and he said, well, what did you do with the money that I gave you? And he I says, buried it. I buried it in the ground. And the master was infuriated. He was, he was so upset. He, he called him wicked. He said, how dare you bury? I had confidence in you yeah. to give you a portion yeah. of what belonged to me for you to do something with it. And instead, you were scared. You were fearful. You were too focused on things that didn't matter mm -hmm. that you buried it. How many times are we burying? what God gave yeah, to us by wow. way of our talents. And it doesn't look like everyone else because you are the best you. Yes. And you're a terrible anybody else. That's right. right. So how often are we burying something? Um, how often are we even shunning the reinforcement that will build us up when someone gives us a compliment? Oh, no, 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 no. No, that's not me. Right. You know, shying back from, oh, so-and-so has this ability. No, I can't. I'm terrible at it. Why do we believe our worst critic but shun our best compliment. That's a great question. I, Why do we do know. that? <laughs> but we know. do it all the time. Someone yeah. could say, you have a gorgeous smile. Oh, my That's teeth are too yellow. You know, you'll, you'll say something to dismiss right. the very thing that God may have sent in your life to reinforce you and to cause you to feel good about yourself. Just mm -hmm. say thank you. That's all you need to say. Thank you. And believe it. Yes. And believe it. People don't say nice things I'm just telling you, no I ever gave you a compliment, I ain't got time to be right. handing out compliments for no reason. And I will tell you if you have lettuce in your teeth. Amen. Right. I will tell you. Bless the saints to tell people. And if they, they didn't say it, they didn't mean it. Absolutely. So. Not genuine people. And you can tell genuine right. people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so we need to receive those compliments mm -hmm. and learn just to smile instead of rebutting it. And what you're going to see is your confidence build. Yeah. But again, I think we all need to work on receiving our compliments and not you know, believing our worst critics. Amen. That is just how our worst critic is ourselves. Oh, so, ooh, Leo. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So the third key, and this one we've hit on, we dedicate the entire video to this one. Come out of sin. Come out. Gotta come out of sin. Come out. Um, Sin keeps us stuck. Yes. Sometimes we wonder why we go around the same yeah. mountains, dealing with the same thing, and then seeing that, like, God, where's my breakthrough? Where, where's the desire of my heart? And in singleness, um, a really major weight is pornogra pornography, fornication, lust. We have our eyes on the wrong things. Our actions are not lining up with what we need to be doing. We turn over to um, Hebrews 12. Right quick. Page of Steve. <laughs> I love a good Bible that I can flip the pages, though. Yes. My Bible does, like, flip to certain sections where it's just, like, it always opens to, like, these five or six places. So in verse, or in chapter 12, verse 1, it says... Lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Mm -hmm. So if the straight and narrow is here, if your relationship with God is going here, you can't, first of all, don't cheat on God. Ooh. Sin is cheating on God. If you're in a relationship with God and you're doing the opposite of what he tells you to do, you're cheating on him. Yeah. Sure. And let me give a pause break, break right here. You know, our current culture tries to say that if anybody calls you out on sin, that they're judging you. Um, the saints will judge the earth. Yes, and you can, you can call something by its fruit. If I'm seeing, if you're in fornication and I say, well, 
so and so, you're in fornication, you should stop doing that. That's not stop judging doing it. I'm, I'm right. calling out an action, you know? Not to mention, actually, it's judging the situation for what it is. Yeah, That's there's truth in that. Judging is the root word for justice, meaning to make something right. So, wow, so, etymology clarifies a lot. I love to clarify words. <laughs> but, you know, and check it as a friend. Number one, no one's your friend if they're going to let you walk down no, a path of, of, of destruction. No, they are not. They are not your friend. So take the people who are, 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 are sincere enough right. and risk your friendship to tell you the truth. Absolutely. As somebody you count as dear, because it's yes. never hard to it's confront not. somebody. It's not, it's not easy to com com confront somebody you love. Yeah, mm -hmm. you probably don't. You probably only confront them because you care about Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Right? And so that's oftentimes we're running from the very, the very thing that can set us free. Mm -hmm. The Bible says this: "Who the Son sets free is free indeed." I also want to clarify something else: having a belief in God is not the same as living and serving it sure Him. Sure isn't. Because the Bible says this: the demons believe God that Jesus is Lord and they flee, they tremble. Mm -hmm. But the demons aren't servants of God. Right. And so I really we really need to adjust our our righteous perspective concerning the word of God because simply because I believe in something doesn't yes. mean that I'm practicing it and living in it. And right. true Christianity mm -hmm. is living our life for Jesus Christ mm -hmm. on a daily basis. It's not simply saying, well, oh God, I think he exists, but every day you live like the devil. If you're going to talk the talk, you're going to walk the walk, people, come on. So true. Absolutely. It's so true. To further that point, um, how do we set aside weights? What are the weights? First of all, I mean, a lot of us know what the weights are, but we're just going to clarify. Um, Galatians 5 verse 16 says, This I say then, walk in the spirit and do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust, for the flesh lusts against the spirit. So yes. what this natural body wants, my spirit, when I decided to be in relationship with God, says, no, I don't want that. Um, and these are contrary to one another. Um, so you cannot do the things that you would not naturally do. The excuse that, oh, that's just me, is inexcusable. Right. You need to tame that's just me. Because right. that's just me will have you a hot mess. Hot. Okay. <laughs> um, but if you be led of the spirit, um, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh, which the flesh is this the your natural body. Right. This this physical being that will die once once our life is over. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, uncleanliness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murdering, drunkenness, and things of this nature. So you get a pretty clear picture of what the issue is. So 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 let me stop here because one of these things that really kind of strike up to me is strife. Yes. If you think you always have to get somebody told, that's a problem. It's an that, that's problem. not that's not godly. Yeah. If you're walking around with a constant attitude, that's not of God. Drop it. We need to submit ourselves to God. Yes, and do. that means first telling our flesh no. Absolutely. I mean, one of the best exa example is when you're trying to be fit and to lose weight. Mm -hmm. You can't do what you feel because my body feels like Having a cheeseburger pretty much every day. It does. Or a burrito from Qdoba. With him. With queso. Jesus. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. okay. Anyway. Okay. But <laughs> the point is, is that if, if it takes that discipline mm -hmm. to reach a natural goal, how much more does it take discipline to reach a spiritual, to reach a spiritual goal? It's so crucial because it's detrimental to mm -hmm. everything that we want to be in life and to be in relationship with people we can't just be and do what we feel mm -hmm. so starting with my immediate family these are people i'm also in relationship with too so if i'm not practicing walking in the spirit with people i'm currently in relationship with what you gonna think what you gonna get allowed with bae just because you feel right <laughs> no <laughs> you know when you're me and your dad were first married you guys weren't born and I can remember, this is terrible. 
It wasn't that bad because, I mean, there were certain things that we just never did. Like, I've never cussed my husband out ever. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just saying. I mean, there's you guys, no reason there's no that. reason to. No. But I remember we were trying to go to church on a Saturday for a meeting. And I had something on. He didn't like it. One of them stupid conversations, those stupid arguments. We ended up getting in a fight. And it was a verbal argument. Like I said, no cussing or nothing like that. But it was heated. And I, it was not good. Motions were high. And, you know, we decided, we made a decision. My decision was, you know what? I was saved before I married you. And I am not going to let you pull me out of character and vice versa. Because I know I have the ability to pull him out of character too, meaning push all his wrong buttons. And, you know, that decision drew a line in the sand to where it, it just never got that deep again because we decided to. And, you know, I want to encourage you that if you're dealing with a sin issue, that that it, it almost 99.9% .9 has to deal with your decision to continue to do it. Yeah. The enemy cannot go against your will and cause you to do something that you have just decided, I ain't, yes, ain't. I ain't doing that no more. Right. And when you decide and then you ask the Holy Spirit to help you, it is amazing of the deliverance that takes place. Amen. You know, Alicia, you talked about how you were dealing with anxiety, but it, a lot of it had to do with your attitude. Yeah. I thought that I am clinically depressed and struggle with anxiety and just this is going to be how I am and I'm always going to struggle with that. But first of all, and we'll hit on these things too, which we might have to do a part two of this, which is perfectly oh, okay. Mm -hmm. She did tell me that we were going to have to do a part two because we like to talk about things. Humility. I'm not. I'm literally in the uh, middle of them, but not in the middle of this argument. Um, <laughs> But um, one thing is, is that you have to recognize your mind. So the circles that I was hanging in, decisions that I was making and choices that I was determining not to do, not submitting this issue to God, not um, just seriously being in the word was causing me to be anxious. But when I decided that I am sick of feeling this way, I'm sick of feeling a hot mess, being a hot mess, having hot mess friends, I'm done with it. Guess what? I haven't been anxious in an entire year right? because I was determined that this is not how I'm going to be. Now, when circumstances come around, I recognize it like, no, right. that's trying to draw me back in. So yes. I draw a line. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, that cannot come in. So if that means people get cut off, you ain't talking to me. I'm not watching that. I'm not dwelling on that in my mind because ultimately all I can control is me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That the power that we that God has given us to change our mind and to be determined about something, that's a powerful, powerful uh, yes. uh, resource. It, it, it's our own, it's our best resource. That and the power of the Holy Spirit, wow, goes so much, it goes so much in changing our mind, which is really where we have to start with God. Mm -hmm. And even if you're away from God, you know, you may have been on a path where you felt very strong in God, mm -hmm. And now you feel that life circumstance may have just pulled you in an opposite of direction. It's a decision we make. It is. And Absolutely. we can make that decision, whether you're in your bedroom, your living room, to walk with Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, it, it's a prayer, but it needs to be a sincere prayer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, it's really like when you decide, I'm not eating cheeseburgers until I lose 10 pounds. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a similar, you're making a constant effort daily to reinforce that habit until you reach that goal. Mm -hmm. And not that salvation is some ultimatum that we can reach and then fall off. That's not what I mean. But we are talking about being intentional. We are talking about being intentional. And when we walk with God, it mm -hmm. must be intentional. You know, sometimes we are uh, wondering why our version of Christianity doesn't work. It's, it's because not. it's not about our version. Mm -hmm. It's about submitting yourself to God. Yes, it's yes. about God's version. God's the version. only version. The only there version. are no other additions. There are no other additions. And so I believe 
that you want to wrap up with your last point? Yes. So we had eight I'd like to end on an even number because that's the way that I think. Um, the, la the last key we're going to leave off for today. We might have to do another midweek on that because I thought that was pretty cool. Was but fun. key number four, which is something I'm learning right now, is it's time to grow up. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. want big aspirations. Um, we have things that we want. Being in a relationship, being married mm -hmm. is a big aspiration. But to be in relationship with anyone, it takes maturity because people are going to make you mad. They're going to rub you the wrong way. They'll say something. But if we just decide that we're going to be angry and be all about mm -hmm. that's just how I am and be nasty and mean, we can't be in relationship with anyone for any amount of time. Mm -hmm. And it takes maturity. So that goes for unchecked personal habits. We talk about sin habits. Um, but then there are also just personality quirks, which may or may not be sin per se, but it's just like, oh, you really need to shore that up. Um, I think of the... Scripture found in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. We have the same scripture. We have the same scripture. Why don't you, you go ahead and read it? it? Okay, so 1 Corinthians 13, 11 says, When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. Mm -hmm. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I did away with the childish things. Amen. And so I think that that really speaks plainly that we cannot continue to, it covered a lot of things. Yeah. Think, speak, feel, feel, reason, behave like children. So what do children do when they get upset? They do it. They throw a fit. They throw a fit. They scream and holler. <laughs> they don't consider where the other person is coming from. That's childish. And, you know, something just hit my spirit. You know, it's not hard to watch things on TV that uh, stir that. Mm -hmm. It stirs it in our heart. I remember you guys used to watch a show, and it was a bunch of moms fighting over their mom. kids. Oh, oh my and god! And I hated that in our atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, like the dancing, but still. Yeah, still. I said, turn that off. I said they're constantly arguing. Mm -hmm. They're constantly gossiping against about behind one another's back. Uh -huh. I don't want that in my atmosphere. Right. Right. Exactly. And I mean. Oftentimes, we're wondering how, why we are reverting to certain actions mm -hmm. and attitudes. Number one, check your friends. If your friends are always trying to get somebody told, then that's probably going to rub off on you. And you know, it's not cute. It's really not. It's one thing to, to, to occasionally have to stand up for yourself. It's another thing to always have an attitude, always get smart with everybody, mm -hmm. and, and feel like, can nobody tell me nothing? Mm -hmm. You don't miss me with that. That's not the way the real world works. And it's especially not. when you're talking about being in a relationship. I wish I would snap my finger in it Daniel is. Mark and Goodwin Jr.'s Ooh, face. That would not that you know, he just, it wouldn't even, I wouldn't even think to do it. But I'm that just saying. how you think. You yeah. have a mature, grown woman mentality. Right. Okay. right. It doesn't take all that. Maturity also has to do with because no one's perfect, but recognizing we, uh, there are two sides to every story. And recognizing in that side, what role did I play? Yeah. It's not, if you're so determined to get someone told, it probably has to do with you not realizing what did I do to contribute Absolutely. to this schism that we're having right yeah. now, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, go ahead. Well, and being an adult is not just saying I'm grown. If you got to say I'm grown, mm -hmm. you ain't grown. Yeah. Check how grown you are. Because that she should, should have to qualify it. It should, should be, be very important. You yeah. know, I have enough bills and responsibilities that I know I'm grown. So that doesn't even ever come out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But the real point is, is coming into a maturity even with God. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another uh, something that we're missing today is that we forget God is watching us. He is listening to us, mm -hmm. and he has the ability that no one else has, which is to search our hearts. Yes. The Bible says the Lord searches our hearts. He tries the reins and gives every man according to his ways and doings. Oh, sounds like God's watching what you do. Uh-oh. Yes, he is. Be careful. Mm -hmm. And he's not Santa. I love this, though. He's not. <laughs> He's greater than Santa. Of course he is. He knows when you are sleeping. <laughs> okay, it's October. But <laughs> it's almost yeah, it's almost Christmas time. But 
in that same note, I want to encourage that person who's single and been walking with God. Because oftentimes we use a scripture that says, you reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. But we don't think of that in a good way often. Absolutely. No. Do you think? A lot of times we don't think about, I've sowed my time into the house of God. Right. Most, most people think, oh, you did bad to me. You're going to get some bad in return. Absolutely. And, yeah. <laughs> but if you're walking with God and holding on and you're doing your best to serve him, there is a reward in that. Absolutely. The Bible says that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So I want to encourage you, if you're holding on to righteousness, and especially in this evil generation, I don't have doubt that God is searching the earth looking for those mm -hmm. who are holding on to principle and finding ways to bless them in their lives. Absolutely. Yeah. And one last scripture. It's always amazing how we will make points that just come right together and fit in perfectly. But of course we pray before we do this. So that is no surprise. Um, but that's, that's kind of the contrast I wanted to draw between the uh, Proverbs 31 woman and then the 10, the 10 virgins that you find in Matthew 25. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who have continued to watch um, Righteous Resolve, you know that we've been talking about the Proverbs 31 woman who can find a virtuous woman. Her price is far above rubies. And then it goes on to define why this woman was virtuous and why she was such a person, a becoming woman of God. Um, and what you'll find is that this woman, a grown, mature woman, is about her business. She is respectful to her husband. She cares and is diligent towards the things that pertain to her family. Well, while I was reach, reading this one time, in verse 18, it said, she perceives that her merchandise is good. Her candle does not go out by night. So first of all, to reinforce what we were talking about, about having self-worth. So she was walking in her purpose and was confident in that. Um, and that was also fueling her fire because yeah. if no one else was going to tell her, that, hey, lady, what you're doing is awesome. She said, look, I know my stuff is good. What I offer in terms of my value and my talent, my skill is worth something. But the contrast, I really, what really struck me here is that her candle does not go out by night. So then I was like, where have I heard this story before? So I flipped over to Matthew 25 about the 10 virgins who were a part of a wedding party. And basically, five of them were kind of just, oh, yeah, yeah. and then when the bridegroom came, it was like, uh-oh, uh -oh. I need some oil. Excuse me, can you borrow, can you borrow your oil? And they weren't ready, and they missed out on the blessing. Wow. Because they weren't being intentional with their time. And so be like the Proverbs 31 woman, or be like the five wise virgins yes. who were being prepared. They were about their business. They were focused on what's essential right now. I need oil to keep this flame going so I don't miss out. Even though it seems dark right now, even though there's not um, anything really shining except for this little light that I have right now, right. I'm going to keep this flame going because you're still going to need that same flame when you're the Proverbs 31 woman caring for your family. It's so true. I want to end with my story that yes. I want to pray because I can remember almost 25 years ago now when I was in the house of God, I was a, a young woman, 19 years old, and I was just excited about being free from sin because I wasn't raised in the church. And I was about doing not only the work of God, but being obedient to the man of God. Mm -hmm. And that meant correction at times. Mm -hmm. That meant, you know, uh, you know, getting rid of friends who weren't really serious about their walk with God. And my husband found me in the house of God. And, I, and I'm willing to say this. I may not have been the most sophisticated at that time. Uh, I may not have been the prettiest. Uh, you know, you might say whatever, but he found me. I also want to encourage you. You don't have to compete for your blessing. Wow, you sure don't. You don't it. have to position yourself or maneuver for your blessing. God knows right where you are because he, again, knows the beginning from the end. Wow. And he's able to bless you no matter what circumstance 
you might find yourself in. You know, um, as good looking as my husband was, there were many women trying to be in his face, oh, yeah, don't do that. positioning themselves. And one day we just happened to be praying at the altar with a young woman and she received the Holy Spirit. And I'll never forget it because my husband and I went out to dinner with our pastor that night. And the pastor said, you should always be a team. Now, he really meant altar work team. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was really the connotations of it. It was like, you guys should work together. You know, I remember having teams back in my other church, and the, we tend to have a synergy. But God was doing something different. God was uh, really revealing me to my husband and my husband to me. And so I want to encourage you. You don't have to leave the church to find a man. I don't care if it looks like there are 50 women to one <laughs> in your church. God knows how to bring your spouse and he'll be your spouse. He won't be, you know, trying to choose between 50 other women. God will send Boaz to you in due season. You know, I want to encourage you even. Ruth was not the only woman in Bethlehem. No, she was not. I mean, interesting enough, Boaz was set aside specifically for Ruth. Yes. Ruth was not the only one gleaning in the field. As a matter of fact, Ruth didn't even have the status no, she didn't. that Boaz had because she was doing a poor woman's work. Because it was part of the Israelites' covenant to leave certain wheat in the field so that the poor people could glean. And yet God or Boaz found Ruth humbling herself under Naomi, yeah. taking instruction. You know, Ruth could have been like this. I've been married before. You can't tell me nothing. Hmm. Notice. Ruth took a humble position, and as a result, God was able to bless her with a man of great stature, yes. with a man of great position, with a man who immediately raised her position in society. Yes. Hallelujah. Wow, that's incredible. And it all Absolutely. happened because she said this to Naomi. She said, your God is going to be my God. And your people are going to be my people. That's some intention right there. What did Ruth do? She submitted herself to God. She resisted the temptation to go backward. And as a result, she had no idea what was ready, waiting for her was an entirely new future. I want to encourage you today. Have faith in God. Yes. When we have faith in God, he is able to do exceeding abundantly above whatsoever we ask or think according to the power that what works in us. All right. You guys want to pray? Sure. Leah, you want to pray and close this out? All right. Let's go. Father God, I thank you um, for us to come together in that fellowship with Righteous Rajah, Father. I pray that our words go out, Father. Um, and bless the people mm -hmm. in Jesus name. Amen. And Father, we just thank you for those who've tuned in. You know, our heart is really just to minister a lot of our life experience as it applies to the word of God. We really want to encourage you. Maybe you're saying, you know, I don't know where, where to begin. You know, where, where did they get all this stuff? I've never heard any of this stuff before. Well, that was me. That was me about 26 years ago. I've never heard, you know, righteousness, uh, I don't even know what context I would have put that in. But God had you connect with this for a reason tonight because he loves you. And I love this scripture that says his hand is not too short that it cannot save and his ear too dull that it cannot hear. Meaning regardless of the circumstances that you may find yourself right now, God is able to deliver you to set you free and to set you on a right path. Mm -hmm. Simply cry out to him. It doesn't matter that you might have just come out of a terrible, ungodly situation. God loves you enough 
to change your life around and to give you a brighter day. Talk to him the way you just talk to a regular person. Repent of your sins. Find a good church. And you know what? You can reach out to us. You know, we'd love to pray for you, to give you direction on how to go forward in God. So thank you so much for tuning in. So like I said, we had eight keys. We only got to four because this Told is you. <laughs> you know, that's the third time you've said that. Did I say that okay. three times or twice? Again, I am not in the middle of this argument. Anyway, guys, <laughs> we left off on point number four. So we might come back with a midweek. Uh, we might uh, do just another Saturday session. But thank you so much. And until next time, you stay righteous. Hey, guys, thanks for tuning in. Bye.